Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I want to share with you a hidden pocket in a journal page that is held closed with tiny magnets. I know, sounds crazy, but it can be done. I purchased a bunch of little bitty magnets and I've been trying to figure out ways to use them because I actually ordered the wrong size, but I figured this project would be a perfect way to figure that out. So first of all, I've got two book or two printed pages from the Bridal Farms from Calco Collage and I want to put them back to back and while I have both of them without any other embellishments, I'll fold them in half. Now you could use book pages, you can use your junk mail to sandwich two papers together, but the key is to have two pieces of paper that you're going to work with. All right, so I've got that portion. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment. Here I have a printed piece of fabric. Did you know you can print on fabric? I'll have in the description box a link to some fabric that you can purchase that comes on a backer sheet. There's one brand that I like better than the other and I'll mention that in the description box. And it allows you to take this fabric and feed it into your printer as if it was paper because it's got this sticky stuff on the back. So now you can see it's fabric. So I'm just going to peel this off. It's not reusable and I don't really like the way this tape stuff works. It tends to make the paper curl sometimes when it's printing, but there's another brand that I like a little bit better. And so I'm using up what I already had. All right. So now what I want to do is I want some fabric strips. Strips are going to go onto my journal page. So I'm going to line this up on my desk here. Normally I would rip it, but I do not know how the bias is on this. And I don't want to rip it and it go across diagonally and it's not the right size. So I want this to be about an inch wide. So I'm just kind of getting my ruler ready and I'll just cut down my ruler. There is one and I can kind of fray the edge if I can grab a couple of threads. So you'll get that frayed, torn look. And I need one more. And I'll save this for another project. So I'll put it aside. So if you don't have a piece of fabric that matches your journal that you're working on, but you happen to have some ivory uh, or white muslin, cotton. You can also iron it to the back side of freezer paper. I'll put a link in the description box of some freezer paper where I've done this in the past. And then you can make sure it's perfectly flat. So I always put it under something heavy for several days, even if it's a couple a week or so. And then make sure it's cut perfectly to fit as an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper to use in your inkjet printer. This won't work on your laser printer. All right, I think I've got it frayed just a little bit. So what I want to do is this is going to be the page where I add some fabric. So I'll add a bead of fabric or just glue for my fabric. So I'm just using tacky glue. And I'll grab my fabric and kind of press it down into the glue just a little bit and then just slide the piece to give a little bit of ruffles. So if you don't have a sewing machine, you can add fabric in this fashion. Just make sure you have a generous amount of glue so that your fabric will stay in place. I plan to go to the sewing machine, so I want to make sure I go ahead and get this into place where I want it and 11 inches fills that space so I'll do it again on this side all right so I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a moment and then we'll go to the sewing machine and then on this piece I have some flat lace that I want to glue down so again, I'll just put a bead of glue down this edge and then I will line up this lace right across the top here. 
and I'll do it on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry for just a moment, and while I'm waiting for those to dry, I'll get my sewing machine ready. All right, so I'm over at my sewing machine. I have a regular sewing machine. Actually, it's an electronic one that I've had for years and I'm using regular thread, a regular needle. I do recommend that you use new thread, not thread that's been laying around for years and years and years in your sewing machine because thread has a tendency to get brittle and will break. So if you want to avoid those frustrations, don't use that old thread or you can try it and then know it could break and it could be frustrating. <laughs> All right, next thing is you want to make sure that if you're sewing on paper and you, you want to make sure that it is dry when you glued it. So my glue is pretty much dry, it feels like. So I'm just going to line it up with the edge and then zigzag stitch down the edge on top of my fabric. I'll flip it around and do the other side. And now I'll grab the sheet that has the lace on the edge and sew it into place. All right, so the fabric and the lace has been sewn down the edges. I'm going to flip this over to the back and front and line these back up the way they are supposed to be. And I will open this up and we're going to work on this edge here. So what we're going to do is I've got these T T T tiny little bitty magnets and I've decided that I want this to be sealed across the top, but then have an opening here that we can put a large journaling card in. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put some drops of glue about three inches in from either side, and I'll use the Fabri-Tac glue because we are dealing with metal in the magnet, and it won't necessarily stick with the Aline's Tacky glue. So if I come in three inches, and then I'll make a little dot, and I'll slide this over and come in three inches and make a little dot. Then I will grab some magnets and these are pretty strong for as little bitty as they are. So you won't even probably be able to see them, but I will pull a couple apart. I got too many and I will drop them into that glue. Okay. Does that make sense? Let me zoom in so you can see it. So there are little bitty magnets that I have put across there. And then I went ahead and cut a piece of book page that is the same length or height of the journal. And I will put some Aline's Tacky Glue on the back side. And what this is going to do is help hold my magnets into place and give a little bit of strength because I am just using copy paper for my book page and I don't want the page to rip. So adding a strip of paper does two things. It strengthens my journal page where I might open it and tear it and it covers up the magnets. So that piece is down. So what I'll do now is I've got another piece of scrap paper so I'm going to do like this and lay it on top and I'm going to feel with my finger where the magnet is and put a dollop of glue and then slide over here and put a dollop of glue. And it's okay if it's not perfect. You just want it close enough to the magnets that are there. And then I'm going to grab a magnet and I'm just going to let it fall into place because what it's going to do is attract to the other side of the first magnet and then it'll be stuck in place. So I'm going to get another one and do it over here. I just love that sound when they click together. So now what I want to do is add some glue without moving that piece of paper and then I'm going to bring over my page making sure it's lined up with the edge. Give it a moment to adhere. And when your page is put together, I'm gonna go this way, cause that's the way it, I folded it. Then you'll be able to pull this apart. You see that? All right, so I'm gonna repeat that on this side. So if you missed it, 
I'll show you again. Line it up. Get your glue ready. About three inches in. It depends on how big your magnets are and how big your journal pages are. I'm using standard copy paper, eight and a half by 11 inch. So that's why I picked three inches. So I'm gonna grab two magnets again. Strip of paper. You want thin paper when you're using these little bitty magnets. If you use cardstock, it won't adhere very well. That's why I'm using the real thin book pages. All right, so I got that lined up again. Add a dot where I can feel the magnet. Drop two more magnets. And then glue this into place. Pull the book page over on itself and line it up and smooth it out. So I've put the magnets in. They're on the edges, okay? Here and here. So now what I need to do is stitch the tops close. So I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and just stitch across the top and the bottom. So here is my finished journal page after I stitched across the top and the bottom and it will fold in half and fit into my journal and when I get to a page I won't know there's a pocket there unless I showed someone that I was giving the journal to but if you pull these apart now you have this pocket and you can hear the little magnets click together and they're not very thick so they don't take up a lot of bulk in fact the fabric and the lace has more bulk to it than the magnets and I think this will be great because things won't fall out of this pocket so if you were to shake it this way it shouldn't fall out and it kind of adds a little decorative touch it makes the pages a little bit thicker by backing them like this I hope you enjoyed seeing a way to make a secret pocket in a journal page using magnets. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Of course, leave a comment of what you thought about this video today. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Noah Go Love live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. If I'm not actually live, I will at least have a recorded video for you to enjoy. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to see what you're making. Tag me on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye.